A parallel connection is one in which some components are connected along multiple paths. So what that tells us is that we know a series connection is one in which the current is required to follow a single path. So this current passing out of this battery here, note that this battery is now made up of three cells. And so the current would follow the direct path where it must go through ammeter A1. It must go through the 2 ohm resistor. It will not pass through a voltmeter because the resistance is high. The current then passes through ammeter A3. It will not go through voltmeter V2. And then we reach a parallel connection. The reason for this is that until now the current has not had a choice about the path it follows. But at this point, the current now has a choice to either follow this path, which leads it through the 3 ohm resistor and then ammeter A3, or it can follow this path, which leads it through the 2 ohm resistor, then the 2 ohm resistor, then ammeter A4, and then the current would rejoin again, where we say that that current then follows a fixed path through the 3 ohm resistor and back to the battery. So note here that we are speaking specifically about the parallel connection where the path splits. So there are some elements of the circuit that are in series, but we would still call this a parallel circuit because it contains a parallel connection. Now, as with series circuits, there are three rules that apply in parallel connections. The first one is that the current is divided. As we can see here, since the current splits, it cannot go in equal amounts on two different paths. So what we say is that the current must be divided between those two paths. So what we can see is that the total current, A2, the current passing through ammeter A2 before it splits, must be equal to the current, the sum of the currents on all of the paths in this parallel circuit. So in this case, that is equal to the current that is passing through ammeter A3 plus the current that is passing through ammeter A4. So the first rule for parallel circuits is that the current is divided. Obviously, if there were more arms or more paths for the current to follow, then that would be split between more different routes. The next one is that voltage is constant. The reason for this is because of the relationship between current and voltage, we know that the current is going to try to follow the path of least resistance. So in this case, there's a path that has 3 ohms of resistance, so more current will go along the path with less resistance, which means the current will be higher, which means the voltage will be higher. Whereas on this path, the current will be lower, but the resistance is higher. Both of these result in the voltages being exactly the same. So we say that the voltage that is measured, or the potential difference measured across the entire parallel circuit, in this case that is V2, must be equal to the potential difference measured across any arm of the parallel circuit. Note that this voltmeter must be connected across both resistors because that is the entire arm. So we say that the voltage across any arm of a parallel connection must be the same as the voltage across the total parallel connection. So we say the second rule is that voltage is constant. The third rule is that as we can see here because the current is able to split it has an effect of reducing the amount of resistance in the circuit and the way that we show that is we show that 1 over the parallel resistance meaning the equivalent resistance between this point and this point is equal to 1 over the resistance of one arm that being this side over here plus we're going to call this resistor 1, we're going to call that resistor 2 and 3, and we're going to say that 1 over the total parallel resistance is equal to 1 over the total resistance in one arm, plus 1 over the total resistance, which in this case is the sum of those two resistors in the other arm. The result here is that the parallel resistance, the equivalent resistance between those two points, will always be less than the smallest resistor in any arm of the parallel circuit. The reason for that is because the current splits, there are fewer paths or there are more paths to follow, therefore the resistance is reduced in that circuit. 
So once again, a parallel connection in a circuit will always divide the current because current must choose a path to follow. The voltage across any arm of that parallel circuit will always be constant and equal to the total voltage across the entire parallel connection and the resistance will always be reduced because there are now more paths to follow and therefore the equivalent resistance will be lower than the individual resistance of any arm. Once you have an understanding for these three rules, you can once again use Ohm's law to solve for any unknowns in a parallel connection or a parallel circuit.